Young. The first photographs produced by the Edison Phonograph Company in the late 1800s played sound recordings through grooves on brown wax cylinders. These were sold for 50 cents a piece, held two minutes of sound, and were not able to be mass produced. In 1902, Edison Laboratories invented molded cylinders, which quickly replaced the hand engraved ones. This new method of mass production lowered price from 50 cents to 35 cents. As time went on, the cylinders eventually evolved into the disc shapes that we know today because they were much preferred by the general public. The Edison Diamond Disc Phonograph was released in 1912, ranging in price from $150 to $250, with discs starting at about $1.15. Cabinets to house the disc players in, such as this one, ranged in price from about $1,000 to $6,000. The initial public reaction was not encouraging. The Edison cabinets were less attractive than the rival Victrolas, and the Edison players were not compatible with non-Edison discs. However, Thomas Edison boasted that his players were acoustically better than competitors and conducted tone tests of various players to prove his point. Audience reactions were in Edison's favor during these tests, reinforcing the Edison motto that his discs were recreations of performances, not merely recordings of them. Sales and popularity of Edison's cabinet consoles steadily grew as time went on. During World War I, an Army and Navy model was created with it, which individual units purchased to take overseas with them. Through the latter part of the 1920s, console and cabinet style record players became less desirable with the advent of competition from the radio. On October 21, 1929, orders were given to close the Edison disc business, with the company stating that it would focus on the manufacture of the radio phonograph in the future. Thanks for watching today's episode of Artifacts at Home. Make sure you tune in tomorrow to get another sneak peek into our museum. Have a great day!